Hey y'all, it's Ashley Bookish Rum and I'm back with another video. It is early, so it's a little bit more casual in terms of where, like what I'm wearing for filming right now because it's 5.30 in the morning because I've had to change my filming schedule to accommodate some things and I think that it's going to be a little bit more difficult for me to film at night for a plethora of reasons. So now when I want to get my filming done, it's going to have to be early morning which is cool, not a big deal. I can I can make it work. <laughs> but of course, like I'm I'm not as dressed up because it's 5:30 in the morning. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing in this video is I recently heard about this organization called No Left Turn. And the reason why I heard about them is because of the author Kelly Yang. Y'all know that I'm a huge fan of Kelly Yang, and I follow her on Instagram and she had posted a kind of like it was just a picture of her book on this list and she had talked about no left turn and I was like oh gosh I was like I've never heard about them but once again these are books that are potentially up for challenging I have another video that's going to be coming out talking a little bit about what challenging is looking like across the country and how that's impacting school libraries and librarians but that's a different discussion so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be reacting to the list of books that no left turn has now no left turn is is a grassroots movement that is quote unquote supposed to be and made up of and I'm gonna read it directly from their website common sense parents families and citizens from all walks of life who believe that k-12 education should be free from indoctrination and politicization which I can never say that word so if I still said it wrong you let me know in the comments below basically what this organization is doing is it wants to empower parents and families and a whole bunch of other people to rally together to prevent the, the teaching of things like the 1619 Project, critical race theory, uh, comprehensive sex education. They don't believe that any of that stuff should be in schools and that it radicalizes children and indoctrines children. And in some cases, like with these critical race theory books, it teaches them how to be racist, which yes. So I'm gonna leave the link to their website down below. I don't want to spend most of this video kind of talking about them. I will say if you are sensitive to information like this, it would be best for you probably to ease into it. I know that when I first went to go look at the website after I saw Kelly Yang's post on Instagram, I just, uh, it was tough. I literally had to close my laptop because I was like, I can't do this. This is going to make me extremely upset. And it did make me extremely upset, especially when I started looking at like the missions, their goals, what they did in terms of like reporting and it's a lot and it's hard and as a librarian it makes it even harder because these are books that I now know are going to get challenged and there's a huge kind of social turn in this country at the moment where challenging books is like a big thing right now and I don't know how many people in the booktube, book twitter community really know how big of a deal that is right now but it is a huge deal right now so yeah but what we're gonna do is I am going to react because I didn't go to their list because I wanted it to be true to nature so basically what we're gonna be looking at right now is their book section and this is the part that I'm reacting to and already I'm I'm frustrated. So these are books that are used to spread radical and racist ideologies to students. They demean our nation and its heroes, revise our history, and divide us as a people for the purpose of indoctrinating kids to a dangerous ideology. There are loads of these books for every reading and grade level. If you come across additional ones, please let us know and we will add them here. This is exactly how challenges and banning start. It starts with stuff like this. So some of these I'm probably not going to be surprised to see. I will say that I am not surprised to see A is for activists on this list. I am not surprised to see anti-racist baby, especially when these are so closely related to critical race theory. I'm not surprised to see cast. I am, however, surprised to see Chocolate Me. I have my feelings about Tay Diggs because of some comments that he's made about black women. <laughs> quite a few comments that he's made about black women but I'm very surprised to see chocolate me I think chocolate me is definitely just a celebration of being black and so you can see how this list is going to go and it amazes me that they have a line on here that says that these books revise our history 
when a lot of these books do the complete opposite. They are in place to stop revisionist history and mm, this is why I said whenever you look at this list if you decide to go on this website and look at anything so of course critical race theory is going to be on here because that's like the hot button thing right now is CRT. Dear Justice I'm not surprised to see this on here. Dear Martin has been challenged quite a few times and I won't be surprised if when ALA releases which I will be reacting to don't worry uh, when ALA releases their 2021 most challenged and banned books in the US. I definitely do believe that we have some potential to see a lot of books like Dear Justice. I haven't seen a formal challenge yet but I know it's being challenged because Dear Martin is being challenged. What's interesting is when I did see Kelly Yang's post on Instagram it kind of sent off red alarms which is why I wanted to do this video in the first place because Front Desk is not the type of book that I would think would be something that people would challenge to be honest with you. I think that Front Desk is definitely about the Chinese American experience but it doesn't really come across to me and if you hear the birds I apologize because it's early in the morning. It's not a book that I would think would end up on a critical race theory list. It does tackle issues related to race but I was just as surprised as she was when she saw that her book was on here. How to be an anti-racist is, is going to be a given. Is everyone really equal? So this is one that I've never heard of, but I'm sure that it tackles the question of equity and equality and whether people really are equal or not. It's, it's so interesting with these lists because people definitely do feel some type of way. It's the reality and the structure of our nation. And I think that people think by acknowledging acknowledging the flaws of the United States, that means that we're trying to divide it. But really, it's preventing the cycle from happening again because we've avoided a lot of these discussions for so much time. And now you have people who want to make sure that we continue to sweep this stuff under the rug, which are we surprised? Absolutely not. A kid's book about racism. I have not read this, but I'm not surprised that it's on this list. Me and White Supremacy. Of course, this is going to be on the list. And it's very interesting that this is targeted at K-12 education because to my knowledge, from what I've seen in, in schools that we have partnered with, you're not going to see schools that are reading cast or how to be an anti-racist or me and white supremacy maybe in a junior senior junior or senior class but honestly the likelihood is very very slim let's see another one is our privilege i can't see that our privilege fraudulence in teaching as learning i'm not sure what this one is about i've never seen that it looks more like an academic work but privilege white privilege is often a hot topic for people who are readily against critical race theory pedagogy of the oppressed i actually went to a training where i did uh hear a lot about the ped ped pedagogy of the oppressed it is one that i want to read i heard it's a must read for a lot of people who serve as educators a people's history of the united states this is probably going to fit into that whole category of what they deem to be revisionist history which it's not <laughs> these when you see books like this honestly these are books where the United States history is told from those who have not gotten the opportunity to really showcase what history here in this country has been like it's frustrating like this is super I knew this was gonna get under my skin because I think that it impacts me more now being a parent and I mean not saying that it doesn't impact me as a librarian because oh tell I ooh, let me tell you these conversations and stuff like this going on with challenging and banning and trying to control what kids are reading as a person who works specifically with youth collections it it definitely impacts me but it takes it to a different level because I am a parent and I know that living in the South, that these are potential things that I'm going to see my own child go through and fights that I think that I'm not only going to have like in the workplace, like fighting and advocating for freedom of information. But I feel like it's going to be kind of the same challenge that I'm going to face when my little one gets into grade school. 
The price of nice is not one that I have ever heard of before. This is my first time ever seeing this title. So you want to talk about race? Of course. <laughs> of course that's going to be on there. Stamps by Jason Reynolds and Ibram X. Kendi. That was one of the most challenged and banned books of 2020. And a lot of the books that were challenged and banned in 2020 were ones that were specifically rated related to um, anything about racism and just the systemic racism of the United States. So I'm not surprised to see that on this list. I do think that Stamped has the potential to be on the 2021 list. I think that it may make an appearance again. I won't be surprised if it makes a, an appearance again on that most challenged list. It's sad, but it is reality. This book is anti-racist, which is actually a book that I think I have in digital form. I think I have a digital copy of that book. Also not surprised. I think that this one, this one didn't end up on the most challenge and ban list from ALA in 2020, but it may make an appearance again, depending upon how much traction it's gotten this year. The next one, what does it mean to be white? I've actually never heard of that book, so I can't speak too much to it. White Fragility, of course. There is a lot to be said about Robin D'Angelo's book and the the success of her book writing about racism as it kind of overshadowed books written by black authors talking specifically about race. That's definitely a hot topic discussion. I did read White Fragility last year. I did not ever end up reading it because White Fragility is not a book that is written for black people. Black people reading White Fragility is literally like sitting through a remedial class of something. You really don't learn or gain anything from it. It is going to feel like a pointless read because it's information that we're already privy to. White Fragility literally is written for white people. <laughs> like That's a book that is targeted at white people for white people by white people. It is not something that I think that black people or even most other people of color are going to really gain anything from. But it was an interesting text. I, like I said, I didn't rate it when I read it because it wasn't written for me, but hey, not surprised to see Woke Baby on this list. I can't, is that Yaki? Delgado Wants to Kick Your Ass by Meg Medina. Okay, I haven't read this one. I know who Meg Medina is, but I have not read this book. Uh, and Howard Sins, A Young People's History of the United States, of course. Once again, they're going to look at that as revisionist history. And let's keep scrolling down here. So these books are anti-police. What category did they have these in? Okay, so these books are considered to be critical race theory books. The books that are coming up now are considered to be anti-police, which a lot of these titles, the reason why that they have been banned and challenged all over the United States before is because they've had un quote unquote anti-police messages. So I'm not surprised to see All American Boys on there. I am extremely surprised to see Blended by Sharon Draper. I have not read that yet. I do have a copy of Blended. I thought Blended was mainly about this young girl who was growing up biracial and trying to figure that out. But clearly there is more to that story. The day that Tejan got shot, I've heard of that book as well. I have not read it. Dear Martin, of course, not surprised that Dear Martin is on this list. I wouldn't, I would be shocked if it wasn't on this list. Ghost Boys, not surprised. A Good Kind of Trouble, I read that one last year. Not surprised that it's on there. The Hate You Give, of course, always targeted as being anti-police. I think I became more actively aware of what people would deem anti-police messages when The Hate You Give came out. I believe that All American Boys came out before The Hate You Give. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I became actively aware of that being a reason for challenging when The Hate You Give came out because a police department that is close to me did actively attempt to challenge and ban that book themselves, which says something, you know? Um, I am Alfonso Jones, definitely not surprised. Mama, did you hear the news? I think these these next ones, these these two, these next two are in look like indie picture books. I know that this first one, Mama, did you hear the news, is the second one not my idea may not be. 
but something happened in our town that one was on ALA's list for 2020 as being one of the most challenging banned books so it's amazing that like I said a lot of the books on the 2020 list for ALA are definitely ones that deal heavily with race because that was what was being talked about a lot in 2020 and I won't be surprised if that same theme carries over into 2021 Tyler Johnson was here by Jay Coles. I'm not surprised to see this. Um, so the next category that they have here is comprehensive sexuality education, which is anything I'm guessing that's going to be dealing with sex, uh, sexual orientation, gender identity. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not surprised. 30 days of sex talks. This is so crazy. I just recently read in an article. I can't remember where this article came from i know where it came from it's something toolbox it's librarian stuff basically i came across this article through a journal that i was reading and someone did a really really great article about the fact that basically when we are including books and collections that have comprehensive like sexual education what we're doing is trying to give the kids that we work with the opportunity to be safe about the decisions that we make. Does that mean that we are encouraging, promoting, or wanting teens to be engaging in sexual activity? That's not true. Most of us are like absolutely not. But we're not parent like we're not their parents. That's not our choice to make. That is their choice to make. And if they decide to make that choice, it's wanting them to be safe about making that choice. To stop things like teen pregnancy rates, to stop things like the transmissions of sexually transmitted diseases. Providing them with that information because you know we think that every parent or every guardian gives a child the talk. And that's not true. I know plenty of people, including myself and people who are in the same circle as me, who never got that talk. You learn from your friends, you learn from TV, you learn from probably just not good things. You learned as you went, which is not the best method for learning by making mistakes, especially when you're talking about something like sexual education, because you don't know what you're doing. And things can be potentially dangerous when you start doing stuff like that. So it is sad a lot of times to see books like 30 Days of Sex Talks because it's like you're sheltering these kids from information that they do need to be safe, that they do need when it comes down to making sure that they understand what it means to have consensual sex with someone. A lot of these kids grow up not knowing what that is and then they end up making mistakes and not doing the right thing, you know? Or not feeling empowered to be like, no, I don't wanna do this. I think that tools like this where you're not only educating them but you're giving them the power to make a choice about their body, it's super important, it's really important. However, with that being said, I am not surprised to see Ask a Queer Chick Beyond the Gender Binary, which I absolutely love. If you've never read Beyond the Gender Binary, um, it is one of Penguin's Pocket Change collection books. One of my favorite out of that collection. And I'm not surprised to see this book is gay. I believe that this book is gay has been challenged formally and documented by the ALA. I think it's it might be on one of those top lists. Breakaway, which is a graphic novel doing it let's talk about sex once again i think that books like this are so important so that kids have the knowledge that they need to make the best informed decisions about their sexual health and their they're just their bodies making the appropriate decisions about their bodies i wish that i had a comprehensive sex education when I was in school I feel like I took one class and that was it but no one wanted to really get down into the nitty-gritty of like hey you know let's talk about this it's uncomfortable for all of us but it's a conversation that needs to happen so you can best protect yourself so it's always sad to see that the gender identity workbook for teens I don't think I've ever seen that title Gender queer, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this in a 
follow-up discussion that I had said before, like books really being challenged and especially in Texas. Texas is, is sorry for y'all who live in Texas right now. Y'all say it's a hot mess. Your governor's a hot mess. So Gender Queer is a book that I read a couple of years ago. It is a graphic memoir and it is not my favorite graphic memoir that I read, but I think that it is super important for those who are going through the process of understanding their gender identity and it is a great resource. Gender Queer now is being heavily challenged. I believe that the the huge the meat of the conversations about gender queer really started in Texas and it basically has picked up a lot of traction to say the least. So to see gender queer on here is not surprising. I'm not surprised to see I Am Jazz. It's a great picture book. I have Jazz Jennings. I have her, like her teen autobiography that she wrote. I actually met her in person in 2018. She's a delight. Not surprised to see Introducing Teddy. I'm talking a lot about identity. It feels good to be yourself. I'm kind of, I'm sure there is <laughs> reference to gender identity in this or sexual orientation it's perfectly normal these books are really really great y'all they're great like puberty books for kids and just just health in general for like more of outside i mean high school kids can read them but i definitely think that they're really really good for like a middle grade audience i hate to see that i really hate to see that that hurts my feelings Jacob's New Dress is such a cute picture book. I love Jacob's New Dress. Not surprised to see it here. Juliet Takes a Breath, of course. Lawn Boy, that's not one that I've heard of before. My Awesome Brother, I'm guessing just based on the imagery that this deals with a trans character. I have not read either one of those, but those seem like they definitely deal with the queer community. My gender workbook. So it's two of my gender workbooks. Out of Darkness. I've never heard of that one, but it looks very interesting. Seeing gender, of course, because it's talking about gender. What are your words? And okay. So this one is a book about pronouns, which I just, I'm sorry, y'all. It really, I, I find it so interesting when people make these lists and they're like, we are creating these lists because they make our country more divided. But you are making this country more divided because these books are a way for kids to learn about someone who's different from them and to accept differences, to cherish differences to be proud of differences and and to have a level of empathy and understanding for other people so when i see things like what are your pronouns or when aiden became a brother which is just celebrating kids who have different experiences it's sad it's sad that they can sit there and be like oh well these books are books that are are divisive but you're being divisive by teaching people not to be inclusive okay so they have they have a more CSE which is more comprehensive sex education books I'm not going to go through this I'll be sure to link this down below if you want to see I have read 10,000 dresses which I'm not surprised to see that on here I feel like I just want to read all these books now the boy and the bendy that one just came out not too long ago that came out this year i can't i don't want to mispronounce the name <clears throat> excuse me of this one the hula warrior that one just recently came out as well this is so frustrating this is so frustrating to see this oh uh, julian is a mermaid and at the wedding those are great books those are absolutely my rainbow this one just recently came out as well it deals with a child that is on the spectrum and also identifies as trans. Narwhal. I'm surprised to see Narwhal 
Neither is a very, very good picture book. If you've never read neither, you definitely would enjoy it. It's so sad. <laughs> to see so many titles on here. Red, a crayon story. Wow. The rabbit listened. This is BS now at this point. This is BS. Whit Riley War is a good one. Wow. This is absolutely sad. Okay. And then I just wanted to see the CSE Middle School Books. Anna on the Edge. The Cardboard Kingdom is a great graphic novel. Dragon Pearl. I'm not surprised to see um, Felix YZ. George. I was wondering if George was going to pop up, which that's not the correct title for that book anymore. That book is actually titled Melissa not George. I am not surprised to see Lillian Duncan, not surprised to see Magnus, not surprised to see Not Your Sidekick, Pet, The Prince and the Dressmaker, Rick, of course Roller Girl, Snapdragon, of course When the Moon Was Ours, Witch Boy. Wow. Wow. That's all I can say is wow. All right, y'all, so that was a very interesting list to make it through. I always have to make sure I practice a little bit of self-care after looking at lists like that because they are, they're tough. They're tough to look at. They're not fun to look at because we're dealing with people who are not exactly nice humans and it, it sucks. It really sucks when you see stuff like this. Oh man, I don't even know what to say. I share your thoughts. I will leave the link to the website down below if you know you want to read more about them, look more at their resources, their lists, their reporting, and how they're helping with legal cases. I would, like I said, make sure you practice some self care when you're looking at this because this is one of those websites that is like surefire going to make you extremely upset. So just be mindful of that and think about that as you are, you know, going through the books. But yes, I hate to end this on such a somber mood, but it is kind of like a somber type situation. But if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content from me, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications. And I will be back with a video soon.